Good evening, everyone. It's the 7th of November, and this is the Goldilocks video update. Well, at the outset, let me wish you all a very happy and prosperous Diwali. May you have the best of health and wealth. I think for a lot of market participants, including you subscribers, if you are able to repeat the performance of the last one year from last Diwali to this Diwali, uh, you know, over the next one year, I'm sure you would be very, very happy. So I wish you all for the same. I think there isn't much difference between the sentiment that was prevailing in the marketplace last Diwali and where we are right now, because I think in the post COVID world, last Diwali, there was so much concern, you know, because we were coming out of COVID first wave and there was this feeling that the markets cannot sustain the rally. Uh, there was this debate whether the earnings can actually pick up, Indian economy can actually pick up or not. And the world was very, very fragile. But the market saw strength, and that's probably the reason from that period of October, November of last year, we've just continued to rally. I think what we've seen in the last one year is something I guess we've not seen in 20 years. Uh, and as we you know, get past Diwali this year, you have a very similar scenario because you are at 18,000 plus uh, on the Nifty. Uh, we are out of COVID second wave. Third wave thankfully hasn't happened and will not happen hopefully. And uh, this is an environment wherein once again, questions are being raised whether uh, India can actually sustain this uh, move up. There has been some turbulence in the last couple of weeks, but I think more than that, the key takeaway from the last three months is the fact that the market was well ahead of COVID. You know, there was so much talk in the month of July and August, whether the third wave would come and therefore markets would correct, but none of that has happened and you've had a very clean run. In fact, this is something which I have seen for the last 20, 25 years. You know, when I got into the markets in 2001, I remember before September 11, September 11, 2001, you know, when the twin tower attacks happened, I remember month, month and a half before that, I was fresh out of college and I was discussing the market setup with my mentors. And we realized that the market setup was so, so weak. You know, it almost seemed as if something bad were to happen. And then September 11 happened and, you know, the world collapsed, world equity markets collapsed. And thereafter, 10 days after September 11, on 21st of September, when the president of United States of America decided that we had to attack, the world was very, very scared as to what's going to happen, you know, if this big attack were to happen. And it was that very day, the US markets bottomed and world equity markets in general bottomed. So the beauty of technical analysis and charts is that it's sometimes not only is it way ahead of the fundamentals, it's also way ahead of some unforeseen factors. Uh, COVID is something nobody understands. Nobody did understand at some point of time, you know, when it hit us in March, April. But thereafter, I think the market understood uh, COVID best. So the reason I gave the example of September 11, you know, many such developments have played out in the last 20 years, whether it's the parliament attack, some geopolitical developments, demonetization, I very well remember when I was working for a large uh, brokerage firm in India, you know, just before demonetization, there were indications that, you know, something uh, negative had developed on the charts and then it played out beautifully. And coming back to last year, the day Modi ji announced that India is going, you know, for a lockdown is the day Indian equity markets bottom. So what happened 20 years back in, in 2001 has just repeated in 2020. And that's the beauty of financial markets. So sometimes I think demand and supply and charts in general give you a much better idea as to what's going to happen ahead. And the fundamentals and the cover, as they say, is always very, very late. So with this backdrop, I think if I have to talk about today's market, I think the last couple of weeks have been slightly challenging. Uh, we've seen a large 1,000-point fall on the Nifty right from our target of 18,600. Uh, we saw some stability from around levels of 17,600. We've seen a bit of a rebound. And as I mentioned in my soundbite last Sunday, you know, the period around Diwali tends to be a little stable. So the last three, four trading sessions were stable. On the Mahara trading day, you had a bit of a pop. A lot of stocks did well. Now the question is, what, what next from here? To be honest, there is not much clarity on the charts because the medium term charts are still in bad shape, but the short term charts are not so negative because I think a lot of negative triggers that had developed on the charts have now been absorbed. So I think we are in a sort of a no man's land. There is not much downside. There is not much upside. 
18,050 is clearly the most important level. If the Nifty is able to take out this number on a closing basis, then we can talk about strength. And then I will look at the market with a more positive eye. On the other hand, this area of 17,500 to 600 is a major support. And if this were to get violated, clearly you are going to see a lot more uh, uh, you know, downside. So as things stand, you cannot take aggressive longs nor can we take aggressive shots. And therefore, it's an environment where you have to be very stock and sector specific. Also, I think let's realize that the stock markets are currently at the moving averages. You know, I've always believed that the moving averages decide whether we are in an uptrend or in a downtrend. Currently, we are right at the averages. And therefore, unless we get past 18,050, there wouldn't be many positive triggers. And let's not forget India has been one of the worst performing equity markets in the last two weeks. Now, this is a tag that has never been associated with us in the last 18 months because we were one of the best performing markets. But right now, I think we are enjoying a lot of tailwinds because global markets are super strong. You have the US markets trading at lifetime highs. European markets last week have traded at lifetime highs. And many of the Asian indices have also done uh, you know, quite well in the recent past. So coming back to the Nifty, the last couple of weeks, we haven't seen many positives. There are still more reds uh, than greens uh, on the screen. The pullback, the pullback has looked very fragile. So till we actually don't cross resistance levels, I don't think one should jump the gun in taking aggressive long positions. And there is always a possibility of a deeper cut because as I mentioned, the weekly charts are still in bad shape. So one should not be uh, you know, too adventurous at this point of time. The one concern that I see is that India has not done well despite global market strength. What if global markets were to see some volatility? You know, how would India behave? At this point, I think the global setup is still okay. So I don't think for the coming week that's, still, that's going to be so much of a concern. But to, do keep in mind that volatility is here to stay. And more importantly, despite the thousand point fall and the fact that so many stocks in the last two, three weeks have lost anywhere between 20 to 40 percent. You know, it's happened very quietly. India VIX, the India Volatility Index, has not gone above the level of 19, a level which I have spoken about repeatedly in the last two weeks. Because had we seen a close past 19, then you would have seen a lot of fear in the system. Because I think the India VIX understands the greed and fear factor in the uh, at, at the marketplace. So that's another you know, minor positive factor uh, uh, the way we see it. So I think we are in a consolidation patch. It's good. I think if we can do this and remain in this consolidation patch without much upside or downside, I think that will be the best thing because the market needs consolidation after such a big rise. And, you know, to be honest, we've already run up so much. A lot of the positives are already discounted in the price. Good earnings are already discounted. So companies are coming up with great numbers, but the stocks are not reacting as well as they, they should have theoretically. So do keep that in mind. Uh, so I think if the whole of November, if we can just stay in a consolidation bank, that will be the best. And I don't think the Nifty is going to make lifetime highs in a hurry. So getting past 18,600 might not be as easy. So do keep that in mind. Uh, but at the same time, if support level, levels were to break, you know, that would be a bit of a, a, a problem. Talking about sectors, I think there are some pockets in the market which are helping the Nifty and there are some pockets which are just not performing. I think Bank Nifty has been a huge support. Last week, once again, it came back from the low. So that's one sector that we continue to like. And on the other hand, the IT space has just lost its uh, outperformance. Have you seen how it's behaved in the last two weeks? There was a time in the last six months that this was the first sector to make new highs. But now, you know, this is the sector which is actually, uh, you know, uh, leading this market down. So there isn't much participation apart from an LNT or maybe an SDFC Limited. Uh, I think many other he heavyweights have seen a lot of weakness in the recent past. So there is not much clarity. As I said, no clear indication of a, a major trend up or of a trend down. But like every week, if I have to sum up the sectors where we want to be invested into, right up there would be capital goods and reality. Now, I spoke about this in my soundbite last Sunday. And please note, reality, uh, the real estate index and the capital goods index hit new lifetime highs 
you know last uh, uh, in the last couple of trading sessions so while the while everything else in the market has come off so this view so far has worked very well so i'm still focused on real estate and capital goods and i think there is a lot more upside for most of these sectors followed by psu bank so we covered canara bank for you we covered uh, you know uh, bank of baroda for you we included sbi as one of our model portfolio stocks last month so that's also done well after the results you know uh, there is a lot more bullish talk around it so we've covered that entire basket select banks continue to look very positive whether it's icici kotak i think uh, we remain very very positive there and the unlock trade you know i've been a big fan about it i've spoken about it in every update of mine so that continues to look very positive and i think the market has taken note of the fact that hopefully covid third wave is not coming and therefore a lot of unlock stocks are just gradually making higher highs uh, a week after week so this is broadly the indian market uh, uh, setup at this point where you have to be a lot more stock specific as i said the big uh, trigger from last week is what has happened to gold and silver so gold has got past levels of 1815 dollars and it seems as if it is setting up for a large uh, rally so this is a one commodity one precious metal which i will be watching very closely uh, over the next few weeks i'm getting the indication of a large uptrend starting off in gold and silver please note this is a medium term view do not take short term uh, trades or day to day trades based on the view that we give out because we don't track gold and silver or commodities on a very short term uh, time frame but i thought i must put it out because something significant uh, is happening on the charts also i think the kind of strength european markets have seen you know they have they are currently trading at 52 week highs after being in a range for a very long time the russell 2000 which is a very large broad based index in the us has seen a breakout after almost 8 months so that's another very positive development last week and it and if the russell 2000 continues to strengthen which is the view then i think the world should be safe and if the world is safe then india will not see a much deeper cut so that's another uh, encouraging aspect you know as we head into the coming week so this broadly i think sums up the indian market and the global market environment the key takeaway is that we stay stock specific i don't think there is much to do on the index front on the nifty front bank nifty we remain positive our working target is 43000 so that does not change and all dips uh, should be used as a buying opportunity coming to stocks so every time we cover we do our video update we list out certain stocks that uh, you know have a positive setup and we feel could outperform uh, in the past some of these names have done quite well whether we've covered it officially or not you know the run up has happened so this week again very carefully we've selected a few stocks you know which uh, i thought i must highlight to you all i'll start with the unlock trade so i've been a big fan we covered pvr as a big catch idea people who are subscribed to the premium plan would have received this call a month and a half back it's already done very well for us and uh, so pvr is already covered but the two other stocks in the unlock trade that we like are indigo and delta corp so indigo is a favorite uh, i've spoken about it a few times in the past has been sustaining above 2000 and it seems that a larger move is coming and delta corp we covered it as a stock bullet idea did very well seen a bit of a pullback in the recent past but i think it's setting up for the next wave up so as part of the unlock trade i think these two stocks really fit the bill gati from the logistics space i think is developing a setup after a very long time in the psu space we have grsc uh, again a stock which has been a huge underperformer all along but the setup has developed well so on a on any small dip we can look at some uh, trading positions maybe in grse federal bank i think uh, has been a stand out performer in the recent past and it seems as if the stock is likely to do bigger things over the next 3 to 6 months so keep an eye on this one and use all small dips as a buying opportunity relaxo footwear again if you have to talk about relaxo and bata i think relaxo is something that i have liked and we've covered it once in the past structure is gate the stock is already at lifetime highs and i think it's going to do bigger things going forward phoenix mills again i spoke about it a few times i think last week was a good move on phoenix mills and i think it's going to see a much greater up move over the next many months automotive axels beml a stock that we covered as a stock bullet and the long term target is still open there i'm really loving the structure for beml i know most of you are still long based on our idea on our call that we gave i think it's going to do 
uh, much greater things you know over the next 6 to 12 months so bml the charts are suggesting there's something happening behind the scenes that could lead to you know a special move going forward kpr mills and finally signity technologies so this is the basket of 10 11 stocks you know that we like at this point of time and uh, we might cover them officially you know once we get everything in place on the charts because as you know we look at 10 12 15 parameters before we actually pull the trigger on any stock so we will wait for that confirmation